This is the seventh in a series of tutorials on building a simple experiment in Pebble. And in this experiment, we are building a simple test that the subject has to decide whether a number is even or odd. And we've gotten to the point where we can display a number and we can collect the response and we can determine whether the person is correct. And now we want to think about the design of the experiment, how we put a bunch of trials together. So I'm going to open Tutorial 7, Design. And if you look through this carefully, nothing below, nothing in the trial function has changed, nothing in the is odd has changed, um, and nothing before the instructions have changed. So here is the only stuff that's changed. And we'll try a couple things here to see what's going on. So I thought, well, what kind of numbers do we really want here? And I, I decided that I didn't want any two, one or two digit numbers for whatever reason, uh, probably partly because there might be less interference. Uh, you know, if you have three odd numbers or two odd numbers and one even number, we might want to see if that has an effect. So here I created subsets of sequences um, Sequence creates a list of, of numbers uh, from a start to an end with a different skip value. So this uh, has a list of all roughly 500 or roughly 400, I guess, or 450 um, odd values between 101 and 999. And this gives a sequence of all uh, 450 even values in that range from 100 to 998 every, every two elements. And f um, even though there's 450 here, there's a there's a lot of them. This is done in a, just a couple of milliseconds. It doesn't t take almost any overhead to do, so you don't have to worry about um, thinking about doing something really efficiently when it's something like creating a sequence. It, you can probably create a million of a million a sequence of a million without incurring significant overhead. Um, so, but I don't want to do five or 400 of each one. I only want a couple, and so I'm going to specify reps up here. This is going to be the main um, parameter. How many rep how many repetitions of my two trial design do I want? And this would say 10, which means 10. I'm going to have 10 even and 10 odd trials. So um, I'm going to use a function called sample n, which takes this 500 and samples. 10 randomly from here and 10 randomly from here. And this is nice, doing this this way is nice because I'm guaranteed to have 10 of each. This makes it a balanced design. Um, you could just sample 20 from the numbers 101 to 999, but you're probably going to get 15 of one and 5 of the other or 12 of one and 8 of the other. So this guarantees that we have 10 of each kind or the same number of each kind. So then, uh, but I have two lists right now, an even list and an odd list, and I don't want it systematic. I don't want the person to know beforehand which one it's going to be. So I'm going to do a couple things. First, I'm going to merge them together. Merge takes two lists and makes one list, but it does them by just concatenating. So here I'll have 10 odd numbers followed by 10 even numbers. So then I use the shuffle command to um, mix them together. So just like shuffling cards, it'll shuffle them in, in a random order. So that's my basic trials. I'm, um, you might want to have a little more control over it. And so you could do something like this. I've commented out so it doesn't use this. So it says, I'm going to use exactly these trials. And it, you could even do it. You don't have to put a shuffle. You could actually s give the exact order you want people to do it, them in. And maybe test things about whether seeing the same number twice has an effect or seeing odd numbers three in a row would have an effect. Okay, so that gives me the design. Um, it gives me the sequence of trials that I'm going to use to um, create the task. So for every one of those trials, all I need to do, do is run the trial function with that argument, and I should be able to run this experiment. However, how do I do that? Uh, you you want to be able to um, loop through them, and there's a there's a keyword in Pebble called loop. Loop will uh, take takes two arguments and then it has brackets. And so the code here in the brackets will get uh, executed f 
for each element of trials. And so if we had just used these numbers without shuffling, um, it'll get through here. And the very first time, I will be bound to 101. Then the next time, it'll be, and it'll run all of these operations. Then it'll be run, bound to 300, then 511, then 24, and so on. Now, we're not using these, and we're not even, and we're shuffling. We've shuffled them if we were using these. So it's going to be a random sequence. So what, whatever trial en trials ends up as, it will operate on these. So it'll have 20 trials in this. I'm going to get that the things returned from trial here, and then I'm going to print them out along with the subject code, the trial. I'm going to keep track of a trial variable and a start time to, to know when every, every single one begins. So let's run this. So now you can see I can go through each one of these. There's going to be 20 trials. And every time I did this, it printed out this comma separated line by using this print list function. It got rid of the brackets at the inside and outside. And now I have subject code, trial, absolute time, response time, whether it's odd or not, what response I made, whether I got it correct, and the response time. Oh, this is actually the number, not the response time. So if I had this data, I can now do analysis on it for those 20 trials for that subject. Um, and this, uh, so basically, we are very close to completing this task. The only thing we want to do is maybe save this to a file instead of printing it out here so I can have a file-based recording of all my data. And that's what we'll do in the last one, along with some other things that I put in on Pebble on tasks to make them more usable to other people.